All right, we are back here. The NFL preview continues on the podcast. We're continuing our annual tradition here, doing our NFL over-under win total picks. Joining me to do it as always, the great Joe Dalley goes back with us. Joe, how are you? Mike, I'm doing great. Always a pleasure to be on the podcast, but I got to say something. Yeah. Um, I know it's becoming an annual tradition, but I think it's becoming an annual tradition because every year you win. Yeah. I think last year was a tie. All right. Ty doesn't get you anywhere, though. No. Notoriously here, I'm the loser. So I think you just continue to bring back the loser so you can continue to win. It looks better on your on your behalf for the podcast. Yeah, well, I'm not going to go that far. Okay, I appreciate that. You're too kind. Yeah. Yeah, it's always a lot of fun they, talking football. We know when you when you roll around the pocket, it means we're about ready for NFL season to start. I know we talked hard knocks a few weeks ago. Now the real stuff is coming. I can't believe it's here. I mean, it, it's funny. It, it, every single year, the same thing happens. We say oh, my God, I can't believe football's here. And then fast forward, you know, 15 weeks later, it's, oh, my God, I can't believe we're almost near playoffs. And then it's February and the Super Bowl's here and, oh, no, no more football. The the, the NFL has dominated the sports calendar, uh, which has been great because although there may not be real football, there's always something football-related going on. But here we are. We're here. Week one is around the corner. Yeah, week one's around the corner here. We got a lot of games in week one of injuries here. I mean, we got the big opener Thursday. You got the Friday game in Brazil with the Packers and the Eagles. We got a loaded Sunday slate. The Lions, Rams, Sunday night. Jets, 49ers, Monday night. There's a lot of good stuff week one. Oh, I mean, there's a lot of really marquee matchups. I think you you hit on you hit on all of them right there. Um, I hate the Green Bay and Philadelphia games on a Friday night in Brazil. I like the idea on a Friday night football. I mean, like I said, you could put football on, you know, at 3 a.m. on a Tuesday, on a Tuesday morning, and I'm watching that game live. But I don't love the fact that they're on the road um, playing in Brazil for, for the opener. But, yeah, a lot of really good marquee matchups. I mean, I think all eyes are going to be on, you know, Patrick Mahomes, but see how he looks coming out, um, defending his Super Bowl once again. And the biggest storyline in the NFL is obviously the New York Jets and Aaron Rodgers. The return of Rodgers, how does he bounce back? How long does he last? Does he last? How do the Jets do with him? So, like you said, football's here. And I am going to be glued to my television set on uh, starting on Thursday. Yeah, for sure. I think I'm going to miss most of the Friday game because I'll be at City Field watching the Mets play. But, like, I'll be locked in for a lot of that slate. Now, I'll tell you what, that is your biggest mistake. Yeah is still believing in the New York Mets. I know we're not here to talk to New York Mets, but my friend, stop getting sucked in. Oh, it's I, over. I, I got, we have a plan. So it was a ticket plan. It's already on the plan. So Give it away for free. <laughs> let the homeless let the homeless go. Save you the headache. Save you the gas. Mm-hmm. Save you the parking. Let, give it to a homeless person. Let them go enjoy the game. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're gonna, we'll leave the Mets behind here. Get into the tradition here. NFL over-unders here. We're doing over-under win totals. Three overs, three unders each. We're using numbers from DraftKings here. And I was looking over these numbers before the podcast, Joe. There are some interesting ones on the board here. Yeah, there are a lot of interesting numbers. I don't know about you, but I, I, I when I was looking at the board, I felt like there was a high... There, the numbers were way higher than usual. Yeah. I didn't see that many of them mid-tier, but um, I, was, I was surprised with how many high numbers there were. Yeah, there's a lot of eight and a halfs, nine and a halfs on the board. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, just sitting here like going six and a half or, or like yeah, five and a half. I noticed that between that five and a half, seven and a half, you didn't see a lot of that. It was either above it or below. It, so very interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting stuff here. So uh, as the guest, I give you a choice. Do you want the first pick or the second and third pick? Then we'll alternate after that. I'll take the second and third pick. All right, here. So I'm going. I'll have the first pick here. I think I have one. I feel like is a one I've been going to for a few years. I'm sitting here going, okay, like eventually this is going to happen. So I'll just keep picking it till it does. Give me the Pittsburgh Steelers under eight and a half wins. Because I feel like this is a situation here where this team last year was out gained in most of its games and still found ways to win. They went to the playoffs and got smoked by Buffalo. The Russell Wilson, Justin Fields thing, a quarterback doesn't really inspire our confidence in here. They got a new play caller. I don't know how that's going to work here. I just feel like the division is stacked. I think the odds are stacked against them here. I know Tom has his ridiculous streak of winning seasons here, and the bet here says I think it continues. I do not agree. I'm going to take the under here. Yeah, I'll tell you what. That wasn't on the board, but it's definitely one uh, on the board for me at least, but that's definitely one that I would 
Um, and so it's funny enough, I was, I was just talking with a few buddies about the Pittsburgh Steelers because we're in the heat of a draft for fantasy football. And I'll tell you what, I don't really trust anyone coming out of Pittsburgh. Um, and although Tomlin has that track record, uh, I put it, I put it this way. When you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. And I think that quarterback situation in Pittsburgh is an absolute disaster. And I just, uh, I'm with you. I could definitely see that under hitting this year. Yeah, it's another thing, one of those things you look at it and you're staring at the number and you're like, this makes no sense. Another defense is good, but like you look at the division they're in, I think they're they might be last place in that division. Oh, and I think that I think that's very easy to put that last place title on them. Just looking at who's there, you expect the Ravens to be a solid team. You expect the Bengals to be better than they were last year. Cleveland will definitely be there. You don't, you, you know, Cleveland's another weird team that you never know what you'll get out of them, but. Uh, I'm on board with you. I like that under a lot. All right. You're up first here. Where are you, For your first pick, where are you going? Okay, so my first pick, I'm going over for the Houston Texans, over nine and a half. All right. And a big reason why I'm taking the Texans over nine and a half is they got their guy under center. I mean, we were amazed by what C.J. Stroud was able to do in year one. I'm excited to see what that prog- progression looks like in year number two. You also gave him a little a nice shiny new toy and, and, and digs at the wide receiver position as if he didn't, as if he needed more toys, you know, a lot of people saying, Hey, could it be a negative thing? The way that he pushed himself out of Buffalo? I don't think so. I think it only helps that offense. There is so much young talent on both sides of the ball that I think Houston continues to take that next step in the AFC. And I could easily see them winning 10 games. Yeah, I mean, the NFL's all on board the Texans this year. I mean, they got a lot of primetime games. They got a lot of attention. They were playing on Christmas Day this year on Netflix. So, like, the NFL is all in on Houston. I think they're going to be very special. I mean, when you have a young quarterback like C.J. Stroud that has the energy, the athleticism, and makes the amazing plays, and is, is a highlight, uh, a human highlight reel, a walking highlight reel, I mean, that gets the NFL's attention. You know, people are watching the TikToks of him throwing the ball 60 yards down the field or whatever it may be, scrambling and making something out of nothing. Right? The NFL wants that. Yeah, they do want that. So you have one over on the board. Where are you going next? Oh, sorry, you broke up, Mike. Yep. Um, okay, so for my next pick, I'll go with under. All right, I'll switch it up. I'll go with under. Uh, and I am going Bears under nine and a half. And I promise you, okay, I'm being completely transparent. This has nothing to do with me being a Green Bay Packers fan. But I was very surprised at how, how high this number was. Um, or how, how high this, this number is, rather. Uh, could it happen? Would it be shocked if it happened? I would be a little surprised, but it all is really going to depend on how Caleb Williams plays. He definitely has the talent around him. Right? There is no excuses for Caleb Williams to not, for, for him to not succeed. And he, we've seen in the preseason that... He's been able to make plays, but again, it's preseason football. Um, I think, though, that you will have your rookie growing pains. You'll have your rookie growing pains, and as a result of that, there's a good chance that you don't end up winning 10 games a season. But the interesting thing is, is at the end of this season, let's say they don't make that mark. I think we look back at the Chicago Bears team, and we, we if we look back at their losses, we could easily flip the script and say, wow, this team could have probably been an 11 or 12 team win. It could be a team of the future. Yeah, I think the thing is with the Bear, I feel like they're definitely getting a lot of hype. I know the Hard Knocks bump probably is getting people excited about this team, but like I saw this number. I was like, if Joe doesn't take this, I'm gonna take it because it makes no sense why they're this high. I know like this team won what like five games last year and rather than a double their win total on a rookie quarterback, that's asking a lot. I mean, it's asking a lot and it's also asking a lot in a division where the lines are tough and the Packers are tough. And that's mm-hmm. four tough games right there without even looking at the rest of your schedule. Um, again, it's it's real high expectation. I mean, we touched on this a little bit uh, with with the Hard Knocks episode when when it was when the episode one was first released. But there's a lot of pressure on this kid, right? There hasn't been the guy under center at Chicago, um, and although he's looked good in the preseason, preseason football is preseason football. You might as well call it fake football, right? So until he does it, and I hate to say it, and I don't want to sound like it, but you know we've seen some great players get hurt really quick. Right. And a, a, an injury to Caleb Williams where he misses four to five weeks or four to six weeks. And again, I hope this doesn't happen for him. It, it changes the whole outcome of the season. Yeah, it certainly does here. And uh, I think that's a fun one to take here. I think I'm going to go now. I'm going to go to my first. Un- I think I have another under I like here. So I'm going to take it right now. 
And I'm going to take the New York football Giants under six and a half wins because, Joe, you've watched preseason with me. This has not been pretty so far at the Giants. Yeah, again, like, I really, Mike, i got to be honest. Like, when it comes to preseason football, I don't put in too much stock with it. I'm focused more on the guys that are just getting in the league or the guys that are trying to make the roster to see how they're playing. I mean, is there a concern with Daniel Jones? Absolutely. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You're, you're, if you're a Giants fan, that's your biggest concern is how is this How is this guy, is he going to take that next step? Everyone thought after the, the playoff win against the Vikings, he'd take that next step that following year, and it was an utter disaster. He didn't show you anything really in that in preseason to make you feel comfortable that maybe he took the next step. But there's some young talent there, especially at the wide receiver position between Malik Neighbors, Jalen Hyatt. Uh, and I think, you know, I kind of agree with you. I don't think Daniel Jones is the guy. But the Giants are going to let him try out, uh, try it out and see where it goes one more time. Yeah, I think the thing that worries me more, not even the Daniel Jones thing, the offensive line has looked bad again, despite the fact they're still throwing more resources at it. Evan Neal's getting ripped apart by jet backups in the preseason. That's something you want to see. And this is a team that's not had much line chemistry. You have guys missing time with injury in camp. And their schedule, you look at the beginning of the season, weeks three to eight is brutal. A brutal gauntlet here. And like, you get a situation where, you know, they're buried by Halloween again. Then we get to a point where we say, oh, like, if Daniel Jones stinks, are we benching him to not guarantee his contract for injury next year? Like, I think you could see, like, an inadvertent tank job down the stretch here if the Giants get off slow. And you could easily, I mean, you talk about and you look at that division. I mean, the Eagles, obviously, no walk in the park. You're going to have your struggles against Dallas and their, and their offense. And by the way, don't take, don't, don't take the commanders for granted because I think they could be having – they're a, a better improved team and have a ton of potential with Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of the Cowboys, you know when the last time the Giants actually beat the Cowboys was? When was that? You tell me. That was in 2020. Long time ago. Yeah, the Cowboys have won seven straight in the rivalry. Long time ago. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I think it's due at that point, but it also shows you how poor this team has been over the last few years against their rival. That is their only win against the Cowboys, by the way, since 2016. Yikes. Yeah. That's a problem. Is that you have to deal with that team twice. And I think, obviously, reigning NFC's champion, Dallas Cowboys, that's a tough spot for the Giants to be in. But, Joe, where are you going with your next pick? My next pick, I'm going to stay on the overs. Yep. And I'm going to take the Eagles over 10.5. Uh, this is a team that was already loaded. This is a team that is one of the best in the NFC, if not the NFL in general. Uh, and they only got better by adding Saquon Barkley into the mix. Now, I'm not saying Saquon Barkley is uh, is, is, a, is a game changer. Uh, he does have some great playmaking ability, and it just adds a whole other dynamic to that offense. Like the fact that you could rely on a guy like Saquon Barkley um, to make plays out of the backfield, both in the run game and in the in the pass game, paired up with the talent that's already there in Devontae Smith, AJ Brown, Dallas Goddard. I mean. This and I mean I, I didn't even name the main the main attraction here in Jalen Hurst that could do literally everything with the ball. So I think the Eagles are poised for a, a very very big season here and could possibly be a number one seed in the NFC. Yeah, and that's something I like that pick too. If you think about it here, that we have not had a repeat champ in the NFC East since two thousand since the Eagles went one one four in a row from 01 to 04. You look at the situation here, like Dallas won it last year. You figure Philly. Is probably the favorite if Dallas doesn't win again. And like 10 and a half is not a big toll for them to get over. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking at it and you think 11 wins, I mean, I don't think that's out of, out, out of the question for a team that has that much talent. Yeah. All right. So you're on, you're on the board here. I'll I'll stick local. You know, I'm going to take the Jets over 10 and a half here. And this is a big bet on Rodgers staying healthy. But with this roster, what they have going on here, they have improved the offensive line by all accounts, seems to be. You know, going well in camp. Tyron Smith's done well. Fashano has done well as a backup here. They are so deep on the D line. They're bringing, it, they're carrying like five, four undrafted rookies. They found that Hassan Rocky will show up eventually here. And you look at the Jets schedule. the opposite of last year, where they were went through murders right in the beginning here. They might get off very fast if everything clicks right away. And the forty nine game is tough, but you look at their first eleven games. There's a good chance they hit the bye eight and three. And then you're right in range for the going up, hitting that over. Yeah, listen, I mean, like you said it, and there's no surprise with anybody that's talking about the New York Jets. The talent is there. The big question mark is, does Aaron Rodgers stay healthy? Can he stay Can he stay healthy? We saw what happened when he couldn't. 
We have no idea what he's going to be like coming back from the Achilles injury. We have no idea if he could stay healthy or if something else could potentially happen down the uh, down the road in the next in the next season. So it's that's going to be the biggest question mark. That's what every person that's watching the NFL, uh, uh, whether it's an analyst, a commentator, an average fan, is is thinking about when it comes to the New York Jets. It is a huge mystery, and it is all dependent on Aaron Rodgers' health. Yeah, and by the way, I don't know if you're you've been following some of the uh, oh, some of the totals here. Like, you believe the fact that we have now, like the Jets right now, were like recently entered into like betting favors of the AFC, something I've not seen I think since 1999. I mean, it's it, it's rightfully deserved. I mean, like you look at that team last year, and it, it's got to suck because you saw how dominant that defense is. You saw what the run game was. If only they had a little bit at quarterback. Right. If only they had a little bit at quarterback, it would have been a completely different outcome. Yep. Now we'll see if that plays out here. Jets and DraftKings as of recording time, plus one sixty five in the AFC East. Bills plus one ninety five. Dolphins plus two hundred five. So three relatively close favorites there, and then New England plus twenty five hundred. Yeah, New England. Let's not even talk about the New England Patriots. They do not belong in that conversation. No, they don't here. So, Joe, so far you've taken looks like two. Uh, Two overs and under here. So where are you going next? I am going to even it out and take an under. Uh, this one's a little surprising. I think it may surprise some, but I think there's some logic behind it. Uh, I'm going to take the 49ers under 11 and a half. Now, that doesn't mean I don't think this team could win 11 games. I wouldn't be surprised if they won or they hit this number and go over. But I have no idea what's going on in San Fran. This whole Brandon Ayuk drama has been nauseating. By the way, you also are dealing with the same nonsense with Trent Williams, who still hasn't reported and is looking for that new contract. The season starts next week, and two of your star players, one on the offensive line and one of your playmakers at wide receiver, haven't been around. They need to figure this out. Um, And if they don't figure it out, you could easily see them losing a few games here and there, and that's why I stray away from the over of this number, and I think the under plays around. Because, hey, maybe they do reach a deal by week five, let's say. Let's hope. We've also seen players hold out. Look at what happened with Le'Veon Bell. Do I think it's going to be that extreme? Absolutely not. But with that being said, if you miss a few games, even by the time you get ready or up to game speed, you might already have lost three or four games, and uh-oh, you're not looking. You're probably not going to cash in at, at 12 points here. Yeah, I, the logic is very sound, that pick. I respect the logic very well here, and I will say also as a Jet backer, Jet fan here, like you're very happy getting the 49ers now when they have all this chaos going on, as opposed to when they're peaking later in the season. Oh, absolutely. I, if you're a Jets fan, you, you definitely got to be excited because it's one less weapon that you have to worry about um, to defend uh, on the offensive side of the ball. And oh, by the way, you already have that stout defensive line and it's one less big guy that you got to get around. Probably the biggest guy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we had some fun. Yeah, that's a good pick, Joe. I like that one as well on your list here. So we're going to do something in- unusual here. This is something we have never done before on the, on this segment here. Oh, you're, 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 you're surprised attacking me right now? I'm going heads up on one of your picks. Okay. I'm going under on the Texans, nine and a half. Interesting. Because I feel like this is a team that I've seen this plenty of times in the NFL where you have this very exciting young team. They get all their love from the NFL. And then, especially with the young quarterback coming in, and the next year they kind of, you know, take a little bit of a dive. They take a step back before they take another step forward here. And I'm looking at their schedule last year here. They were close game merchants here. They went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of their ten wins came by one possession. They had a bunch of one possession games. We saw what happened with the Vikings two years ago when they had the big win total off of the one score games. They came back down to earth here. And I think the AFC South is a little tougher than people are projecting it to be. They now have a first phase schedule. They're dealing with the Chiefs, the Ravens, and some of these tough teams in the AFC East. I think this is a step back spot for the Texans. I, despite all their I'm, ads, I think they're going under on them. Listen, man, the logic makes sense. The one thing that I think is really different about this Texans team um, is not even players, players of size. I think they have a really good leader at the coaching position. Yeah. And when you have that good leader, I think you keep your players motivated you keep your players hungry. Um, and, you know, it's the youth that's driving, right? So I think the youth got a taste and now they want more. And that, you know, I, I think both 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 sides, my side, your side, both logical, but we're going to have to wait and see. One of us will win that. Unless 
Yeah, one of us will win there. There's no push possible, so. No, so that's a, gu- a guaranteed result. Exactly, guaranteed result for sure. All right, so, Joe, you have one over and one under left. What are you going with next? Okay, so I'm going to wrap up the unders, and I am going under eight and a half for the L.A. Chargers. Obviously, Harbaugh comes into town. Don't know what to expect um, from the coach at all, just in general. But also, I've, I've been very disappointed with Justin Herbert, who – to me, seems to have plateaued in his career. And at first you felt like could be that next echelon or part of that tier, tier one of quarterbacks, but he just hasn't continued to progress. And it could be a combination of just injuries and, and just constant turnover that's happening over in L.A. And by the way, it's a whole new group of people that he's working with, right? You lose, you lose all your top wide receivers, Mike Williams, you lose... I'm drawing a blank right now. The biggest wide receiver that's with the Chicago Bears. Give me the name. Keenan Ke- 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 Allen. Keenan Allen. I don't know why I lost it, but Keenan Allen and and Austin Eckler. Like, granted, they're all aging. They're all not the same players, but it's going to be really different in a different season for Justin Herbert. And I think nine wins is a lot yeah. in an AFC where there are a lot of good football teams. Yeah, I think the reason that total is so high, I think they're banking in. They think they feel like they're the second best team in the West by default, and they figure. You're getting. They have, I think the Vegas season feel like they're going to sweep the Broncos and Raiders, get the four of the eight, the nine you need right there. But I agree, this is not an easy schedule by any means they have. So like, I think they're going to be sitting around the number, which is some, something I would not touch. Yeah, it, I, I think they'll be closer. I'll be honest with you. If that number was a little lower, for example, seven and a half, I would have stayed away from it. Yeah, the eight and a half pushing into nine wins made me think. All right, there's a good chance that uh, they could go under here. Yeah, so that number is in the books here. You're done with your with your unders here. I still have two overs to go. I did all my under the ray. I'm taking, you better not take my over right here. You better not take my over. I'm taking the Bucks over seven and a half. That's the pick. I love that pick so much. I feel like everybody's on the Kirk Cousins hype train. Atlanta's gonna, you know, win the division. We already seen that Magic here. Tampa is a very solid team. Baker's has a, had a great year last year. A lot of that core is back. I get you have some concern with Canales heading to Carolina to be the coach. New coordinator coming in. Obviously, there's risks there. But I feel like this team is getting very disrespected for like how good they've been. And I would say they're a great team here. Eight and nine wins this total for me if I, if they do that. And I feel like you're, this number makes you think, oh, they're going to win six games. I don't think they're that bad. I think this is a number I love. I'll take a hop by it right now. Bucks over seven and a half. It's funny you mentioned the Falcons in that because that's a team that I was looking at. And, and I kind of love, you know. Kirk Cousins and I think you know Kirk Cousins in that offense changes what should have been uh, the tight end position, uh, what should what could be Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Bijan Robinson already a star. So I, I mean I'm very intrigued uh, by that. But your logic makes sense. I mean you win you win eight games and and, and you win it. So definitely uh, a team that a Bucks team that that's going to fight every single week. Yeah, I feel like it's one I feel like I have a good shot to cash here. So you have an over left. Where are you ra- going to round this out? Yeah, so this one I'm taking a risk here. I think this is the biggest risk and, and the pick that I, uh, the, the over and under combined um, that I am least comfortable with, but I'm intrigued the most by. But I like the Washington Commanders over six and a half. Uh, I really like what I'm seeing out of Jaden Daniels, and I think he could be an explosive player at this, le- at this next level. I could see this guy making plays that, you know, we're seeing some of the other top quarterback, young quarterbacks making on a, on a consistent week-to-week basis. Uh, I think he has that skill set between the arm strength, between the ability to evade pressure. Um, and I think he could f- flourish in this Washington offense that's led by a really good offensive coordinator in Cliff King- Kingsbury. And, and I, I think he could be a future star in the league. Now, the flip side of this is if he's a disaster and he's hot, hot garbage, well, it's going to be very different. They're going to be nowhere near seven games. But, you know, I could easily see them pulling it off here. Yeah, that's a fun pick, I got to say, because I do think having the young quarterback here, I think, makes it a lot of fun. And they do have some talent around him, which is, like, I mean, think about the last of the one and two picks had as much talent around them as they did coming into the York situations. That's a nice thing for these guys. And you have a nice layup here where, you know, like, you feel like this is a team that, like, made it, if he ascends later on, he steals a few games you don't think he can steal right now. That also can help you. Uh, I, exactly. I mean, you look at it like I'm not saying the uh, – I'm not writing off the Giants as automatic two wins by all means. But, I mean, if you were to take two against the Giants, I think you could take at least one from Philly and Dallas. And right there, you're at three. You're almost there. 
And as the season progresses, you would only assume that he is going to, Jaden Daniels is only going to get more comfortable, only going to perform at a higher level. And you get to that point, and here you are picking off a few teams here and there. And before you know it, you're at that seven total, and you're looking real nice. Yeah, I think you are looking pretty good there. My last one here, I have one over left to play with here. And I know there's a risk here with some drama with the hold-ins and coming off of injuries here, but I'm buying the Bengals to win the North, so I'm going to take them over 10 and a half to wrap up my picks here. I think this. I think we that they. I know there's also a risk they start slow sometimes that maybe you get a loss or two out of gate here. I think this is a team that's going to peak very well. I think the Ravens having a ton of uncertainty offensive line opens up the North for them to take it. I feel like Cincinnati has been sitting on the cusp here of like. We should take advantage of the window we have with this quarterback. We don't know how much longer to keep this skills and group together. I think there's an urgency that's going to take over here. I think they're going to go over the 11 and a half, 10 and a half. And I think there's an outside shot that the one seed in the AFC. See, I don't remember if I took a chance on them last year, but I feel like I've been burnt with Cincinnati before. I think you and did. I just, I just, what was was the total 12 last year? I think it was, I think it was 11 and a half last year. Uh, was it 11 and a half? So, I, I mean, I've been burned by the Bengals before, and I'll be honest with you. The skill set is there. The talent is there. Joe Burrow, the, the playmaker, Jamar Chase. Yeah, but with that being said, I feel like they always get to a certain spot and then they don't take to, take it to that next level. And, and I could see, you know, a potential a potential slow start. I could see inconsistency. I, I'm nervous about the injury history that we're starting to see with Joe Burrow too. Um, I don't love it. I still think the Baltimore Ravens are the cream of the crop in that division. Yeah, so to reset here what we have done here, Joe took the Texans over 9.5, the Bears under 9.5, the Eagles over 10.5, the 49ers under 11.5 to be the hot take pick of Joe, of uh, Joe's board here, the Chargers under 8.5, and, and the Commanders over 6.5. How are you feeling about that crop? You know what? It's like the analogy that I give – it's like your fantasy team, right? Your fantasy team at the beginning of the year always looks great on paper. And then you get to week three and you're like, oh, gosh, this is a disaster. So every year I feel comfortable with the six I give you. But then we meet at the end of the year and you beat my ass every time. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. They got better luck this year. My picks, Steelers under eight and a half. One of these years will be right. And I'm still going to be an enemy of the Steelers fans who listen to this. Giants under six and a half. Jets over ten and a half. I took both locals here in the mix. The Texans under nine and a half were heads up on that one. Bucks over seven and a half, and the Bengals over ten and a half. It's a fun crop of uh, picks here for us this year. I'll tell you what: any of your Steelers fans that are listening to the podcast are probably jumping for joy that you picked the Steelers to go under because notoriously they're at that five hundred level, and Tomlin continues to work his magic. So they're saying, "Thank goodness that Mike took the Steelers." Yep, that's for sure. Here, Joe. Thanks for all the time. Really appreciate. If you want to follow you on social media, how can I do that? Yeah, give me a shout on X at Joe double underscore D-A-L-O-I-S-I-L. All right, Joe. Thank you for all the time. Really appreciate it. Let's enjoy some football week one. Enjoy it. Cherish it. As a as a, as a a Jets fan, uh, Mike, I hope you have a much better week one than you did last year. Yeah, it's also unusual for me of week one, too, because this is the second year in a row I'm playing on Monday. So, like, I get the entire first Sunday without my football team. You're going to be itching. You're going to be itching and patiently waiting. Everybody, not just you, buddy. Yeah, I know, Joe. Thanks again. Always a pleasure, Mike. Thanks for having me.